Welcome to the next series of slides on analyzing comic panels. And what we're going to look at is we're just going to go into a little bit more detail and actually have a look at some of the different techniques that comic panels are basically um, made up of and how they're composed. So the comp composition of comic panels is a very important point. It's very similar to the way you look at the composition of an artwork or even if you're looking at something like an, an advertisement, the way that it's all been put together. And you'll be looking at the interrelationship, which is basically is a fancy word that means how things are connected to each other between things like images, layout, and text. Now, all those things, you put them together, you bundle them all up, you'll get a fairly rough sort of idea about the ways that they all create meaning. Now, the thing I tell a lot of students to do is to simply work backwards. So you look at things purely as you normally would, you read it, you maybe even enjoy it, and then you look at the ways that those sorts of things make you feel afterwards and what sorts of things in that, what, what sorts of things stand out as, as a way that made you feel that way. So what sort of technique actually stood out to you? What sort of, perhaps, was there a particular frame that stood out? Why did that particular frame stand out? Was it something that someone said? Was it something that, um, was it just a very cool scene? Was it, a, was it a very important scene? Was it just a very important frame? What aspect of those, those panels that you looked at made you feel in that particular way? So what sorts of reactions did you have and what sorts of things and how can you really look at it in a way that you can understand those reactions. So that's what I mean by working backwards. You start with that reaction first and then you work for it rather than trying to go the other way where you're just purely looking for techniques as you go because if you do that you're going to actually lose a lot of other sorts of ideas that you could possibly get just out of purely reading it through first. So you get the, basically the idea of it first, you look for the things that have, or you look for the meaning that you feel afterwards, and then you look for the things that create it. Very simple process. This is what, but these are the sorts of techniques you look at. First of all, layout. Okay, so framing is perhaps probably the more important part of the layout, which is basically how the image is being placed in the panel. So if you have a look at this example there, we've got a number of panels and a number of different um, objects in each panel and lots of different scenes and, and those sorts of things. And they've been placed in a certain way. So, for instance, if you look at the top left-hand corner, the one that stands out the most there, which is the person there, it's a full body of a person as opposed to perhaps a headshot. So framing is that about that choice. Why have the whole body as opposed to just the head? So that's what basically you'd be looking at. With the maze on scene, now this is a word that comes from French, it basically means um, how the scene is set. So the sorts of symbols that are being used in that particular scene to tell you where it is. So if I wanted to change scene from a dark warehouse to the bright sands and sunshine of Sydney, then I might start with something like the opera house. So the opera house in the background to tell us the fact that yes, we're in Sydney. So having a look at that, you're able to immediately, without even thinking about it really, know where the, the story has moved to. Just like if you were to change the scene to a school, you might have a blackboard, you might have um, some students artwork, you might have a play equipment in the background, you might have a school bell, anything else like that. And that immediately tells whoever's looking at it they're in a school without having to write a big thing saying they're in a school now. So that's basically what we're referring to. And sequencing, so movement from one frame to the next. Now usually they're arranged in such a way where they direct you to where you should be looking next. So if you have a look at this one, it's not a purely left to right sort of um, setup. It gets you going from basically the top, down, around, and back down again. So the way that those frames are arranged is deliberately done in a way that's making you follow it without having to use arrows or anything else like that. Now juxtaposition, which is the next term we're going to look at, is quite a complicated one. However, it is quite simple and you probably would have actually looked at things like this before. So it's a term that a lot of English students get stuck on and it's virtually something that gets used in a lot of different um, 
uh, text types because it's basically about how you are comparing um, between one thing and another, but also you are contrasting it. So basically, in other words, you're pointing out the similarities and differences between two things. That's what juxtaposing is. So if you are pointing out the difference and similarities between the text and images, for instance, now obviously text and images are quite different because one's words, one's images, but if you look at the similarities and differences between them, it might be that the, the text and the images are both very dark. On the, however, on the other hand, the images do have a bit of optimism and brightness about them, and the text has a sense of cynicism about it, so a lot of negativity. So in terms of the two images, or the, the text and images, should I say, they're quite similar, but they're also quite different. So that's what juxtaposing is basically looking at, is the relationship between those two things. It's a bit complicated, but the more you actually get used to using the term, it's much easier to, to use it. And it's a very good word to use in particular responses, because if you can use that, then and you can show you understand the term, then English teachers will, will have heart palpitations. They'll love you for it. All right, image is the next thing we're going to look at, because there are some things in... Aside from what you'd be looking at in advertising or in other forms of artwork, there are some different techniques you'll be looking at in comic books. As opposed to vectors, you'd be looking more at leading lines. Now, there are very dark outlines which are used to highlight a certain image. Now, because of the fact that most comics are hand-drawn, they're able to arrange the way that the artwork is drawn to make something stand out. The angle, the next thing we'll look at, is very similar to how you'd be looking at things in film. So point of views, perspective of images, all those sorts of things. Top down, wide shots, they're basically the same terminology that you would use. You probably wouldn't use things like a sliding shot which, or a tracking shot which have cameras moving around. However, you'll use some of the very basic terms to describe perspective and the angle that the images put together. So if you have a look at this one, for instance, it's pretty much a front on static shot which is that it's looking directly, it's covering the whole body. It's not a head shot where we're just focusing on the head. It's not a top down or a lower perspective shot and that he's not on a particular angle. We're not looking down or up at him. It's just purely a very static, very, very simple, boring shot actually. So, but angle refers to any difference or anything that might be um, used to point out a particular uh, idea or, or something with just purely the images. So it doesn't even need to use words to to tell a story. It can just tell a story with the way it's presented. Just the same way that if you're looking at an artwork, it will tell a story as well. Now zip ribbons, or zip ribbons, should I say, uh, lines which basically indicate movement. So if you see little tiny lines around something, and actually our next slide will, will have an example of that, it shows where there is movement from a, an, an animal or a character or something like that. And it's basically, it's, it's, as it says, those little lines around them that show you where or how something is moving. So if it's moving quickly or, or whatever it may be. And the last one we'll look at is cross-hatching. Now cross-hatching is a particularly dominant one in comics because of the fact that it creates a lot of shadow and a lot of darkness. And because of a lot of the the comics that you will look at commercially, but also a lot of the comics that you may look at will be done in probably in black and white. Cross-hatching is an important technique to look at because of the fact that it's how you create um, texture and it's how you create um, a difference between two objects and things like shadow as well. So by using that sort of um, terminology to describe those sorts of things, you're able to actually describe a lot of how the image is put together, combined with things like leading lines. So between the two, you've basically got the main techniques that comic artists actually use when they're drawing each frame. All right, last thing we're gonna look at is text. So very simply, to start with, we've got speech balloons. And they change according to the type of statement. So you might see something like a lightning bolt if it's a really strong action statement. You might see a fort bubble if it's just a fort, normal speech bubble if it's just a normal line, all those sorts of things. The font, which is also quite important as well. For instance, if you have a look at POW to the, to my left, or to my right, should I say, then it's very bold. It's trying to stand out. It's trying to almost leap off the page. It's trying to 
uh, give a sense of action is occurring. So the text and the way that it's all put together is actually quite quite important to actually develop its own sort of sense of meaning. And that's without even looking at what's being said or what's being written. Of course, when you have a look at speech, which is exactly what's being written, the way that people speak and the methods that they use, interjections, exclamations, whatever it may be, the types of language that they use, colloquialisms, the sorts of things that you would normally look at if you're looking at dialogue, they all come into play as well. So this is what I mean as well by they have a lot of variety. You can actually just purely talk about comics in a, in a dialogue point of view and just through the way that each character speaks to each other without even looking at things like images. And it gives you a lot of practice for, for looking at other different forms, particularly things like um, plays or, or um, dramatic works or even just dialogue in books, in, in novels. It gives you a lot, a lot of variety of... Um, ways that people speak and because of the fact that it's combined with things like speech bubbles and different fonts you can actually indicate other techniques which are used to emphasize things in speech which you can't really do if you're looking at it in terms of a novel because each novel is usually written in the same sort of font it's it's very hard to tell unless they bold something that they have um, created something which is a little bit more stronger or, or meaningful in the way that it's been essentially said. So it's actually a very good way to look at the ways that people speak and be able to analyze the ways that people speak. So how do we connect all those things to meaning? Now uh, you'll see to the right there, that's some examples of some zip ribbons from before. Um, so because of all that movement and all that's going on there, you actually get a bit of an idea that it's moving and there's that, that illusion about it. Even though that the image is static, it sort of seems like it's moving a little bit. But anyway, going back on the text, techniques and meaning. All right, you need to ensure you discuss basically how each technique contributes to storytelling and the emotion and the effect of comic battle. So working backwards, basically. So when you're working backwards, you're essentially just looking at those sorts of emotions, those sorts of effects that were created and the way that the, you remember the story being told and look at how all those things work together to do that. So when you read something, or when you have a look at comic panels, they're not just purely telling a story by the fact that they're there. They're telling a story through an arrangement, through all the things that are being put together in such a way that they do tell a story. So for instance, I've got a couple of examples here. Framing makes the character seem more powerful. So if the frame shows the character's strengths and makes them seem more dominant, then that gives you a sense that that character's powerful without even having to say that he's an almighty, almighty conquering titan or he's an evil villain with biceps made of steel. It doesn't, you don't even need to say that. You can just purely say through the framing, it seems like he's more powerful. You might say that zip ribbons indicate a strong sense of movement and action. So in the case of this one, that there's a lot of, a lot of action going on. It's very caricatured sort of action. It's almost over the top sort of action. So because of the fact that there are so many of them and there's so much movement in that image, it seems a little bit over the top. And through the fact that it is a very um, caricatured sort of work and it's very cartoonish, it very much creates this impression that there's a lot of movement going on and that sort of thing. So those sorts of and that's only a couple of examples. You can go on with thousands of other examples and you don't really need to limit yourself. In terms of a, a year 10 exam, for instance, they may ask you for deliberate techniques and just ask for a short description about how they create an effect or how they create a feeling or how they tell a story with those sorts of, um, those sorts of ideas which are being presented in each frame. They might ask you just purely to identify techniques, in which case you would look at some of these technical terms in, and, and layout terms and also image terms to really help to make your, your responses seem a lot more informed and also it makes it much easier to point to actually the things you're referring to because if you just say it looks like it's moving a lot, how is it moving a lot? What sort of thing is, is indicating this is moving? Well, if you say zip ribbons immediately, a mark is going to go, okay, yes, I can see that the zip ribbons are making it seem like it's moving. So. 
If you actually use a technical term, it means it's far more likely that your meaning or your ideas are going to be coming across to your marker and they're not going to be scratching their heads confused going, what are you talking about? So it's a good idea just to have a look at this over again. Have a look at the different techniques, write them down, maybe even look them up if, you, if you're still not sure of the meaning of them. There are a lot more around as well, so have a look around and just see if there are anything else that stand out. Uh, but otherwise, there's not much else really to tell about comic panels. You may come across them, so don't completely ignore this and say, well, I'm never going to come across one because that's what everyone says until they do come across one. They go, I'll never see one, and then suddenly one comes up and they don't know what to do. So going through this now will give you a whole heap of ideas that you can use when you actually look at one. And also, it may just help purely understanding other kinds of technique and tech type, should I say, such as when you're looking at things like print, artworks, and also film, because it uses such a, a variety of them. So that's the end of this set of videos. Until next time, I will see you later.